Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have a very much requested video for you today. This is something I get asked about all the time, like on a daily basis on Instagram pretty much and on YouTube as well. So I thought what better time to cover it. I'm actually glad I haven't covered it until now during quarantine. So it's going to be how I do my blonde highlights myself. I've been doing them exactly like this for years, I'd say since I was about 17 maybe, but just very subtly and that's what I like about it so much and I know that I'm in control of how it looks and that it kind of comes out very naturally at the end. Some errors are made along the way but I, I, I think that they're really unobvious. If you do make an error, it's not like you've put a really stark bright colour on your hair, it's just the formula isn't too overpowering. So yeah, this is gonna be how I do my at-home highlights. I am not a hairdresser or anything like that, so make sure you follow all the health instructions on the packet because obviously you don't know how it's gonna react with your skin for the first time, etc. So definitely make sure you read and follow all the health instructions on there before you do anything. <laughs> So once of you have done that, we can get cracking straight on. So this is how I do my blonde highlights. And basically I start off with the formula. It comes with a few different things. It comes with a shampoo, it comes with a cap that you kind of pull bits out, but I kind of ignore those and put the cap to one side. I hope that there's probably some people who are hairdressers or know exactly what to do who are probably, you know, not happy with me right now. My hair is in really good condition and it provides great results for me. Yeah, this is just how I personally feel about it. I think my hair is in really good quality still, so it's not damaged or anything like that. So I put the um, shampoo to one side, etc., and I get the powder formula and the um, liquid formula, and I mix them together. Um, I'd say I fill about a quarter of the dish that they provide. So I put the lilac-y powder in first, and then I kind of just see, you can always add more liquid to it and more powder to kind of get it the right kind of consistency it's almost paste like so you don't want it too watery you get the right consistency and mix it all together with the brush provided I then don't use the brush again and um, that is done for the brush because I just want really subtle small highlights that I'm in control of with my fingers so that is what I do and that is what I'm going to show you now so the first thing I do is actually find out where I want to put the highlights. So I've been doing a kind of slicked back bun style a lot and I use mainly a middle parting for that. So that is where I want my highlights to be today. So I usually find a tail comb. You can find out how I do my bun by the way. In another recent video I did a tutorial on how I do my kind of slicked back everyday bun. So just takes a couple of goes. Okay, this is pretty much where I want it and you can see that it's slightly darker towards the roots now. I'd say the last time I did this was probably over seven weeks ago. I'd say maybe eight weeks ago. Usually I kind of leave it at least six weeks and each time you do it, don't overdo it. Just do it very subtly. You can always add to it if you want um, rather than take away from it. Yeah, this is what we're starting off with and I'm not going to overdo it. I think the main bits are just kind of at the tops so obviously where it grows out so I try and put most of the formula at the top and then work my way down. So I now have the formula. It looks like this. It's not really sliding around too much. I'm going to get a tiny bit and just take very front strand of my hair. So I'd go for about that much, start at the top and work my way very slowly down. So that is the first strand done. It starts right at the top and I've brought it all the way down. And what I tend to do is I'll do maybe up to about here on one side and then I'll equal it out and do the same on the other just so that they've been kind of on, the formula at the front has been on as long as each other sort of thing. So start right at the top, just get a tiny bit on your finger. Don't worry if it kind of splashes around a bit because you can sort of even that out. So get a tiny bit on like that, drag it down. And I would say if this is the very first time you've done it and you are nervous, just do it 
I don't know, just do a couple of strands around the front and see if you like the result afterwards. I'd say start very, very small until you know that you like it and you can do it. So grab a strand about that big, take it right to the top and all round and spread the formula as evenly as possible. So starting at the top and then slowly just drag it down like that. I don't really take it all the way to the bottom because the bottom ends tend to be the most highlighted anyway. So I think I'll just take one more strand at the front here and then I'll do the other side. Okay, now I'm gonna tackle the other side. Again, just take really small strands like that. You see, that's very, very slim. So I'm gonna work my way around like this now. I'll do a few more on this side, a few more on this side, and I'll go all around the head until um, I'm done and then I'll come back to you when I'm, I'm nearing the end. Okay, so I've gone all around my head now. You can see this is what it kind of looks like. And I've done the back as well. Um, Tim's just held a mirror up so that I could see the back of my hair. What I'm gonna do now is these kind of front bits. So these I find relatively hard to do, but I sort of push that back, take little strands, just the same as before. So very slim and just pop the formula, push it to the top and then drag it down and I'll just go around the front doing the same all the strands and I would advise when you are doing this like me wear something old so I've just got this old hoodie on and some old leggings because um, the formula can swell it does stain make sure you've got some uh, old clothes on and also I've put an old towel down on the floor because again it may drop on the floor I mean I've even got it on my neck it may drop on the floor and stain the floor, so um, just be extra careful and keep something just down on the floor to protect it. And then again, when you're actually washing it out, make sure you've, you're using an old towel just in case any of the stains go on there. So I'll just talk about what I do when I've done all this. So I'll leave it for maybe 10, 15 minutes. I would say at first leave it for about 10 or so minutes and then come back to it and see if there's anywhere in your hair that looks like it might go patchy and just kind of rub it in a bit more, drag it down and make it look more even um, so you avoid any of those patchy bits. And then what I do is just wash my hair in normal shampoo and conditioner usually just use whatever I'm using at that time. I usually do a double wash in the shampoo to really make sure everything's out. Oh, but before that, once you've rubbed it in a bit more, I'd say leave it a, a, a 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes after you finish. But obviously the front bits bearing in mind have been on a little bit longer. Yeah, so then leave it on and then I'll wash it with normal shampoo, double, double shampoo it and then conditioner. And I don't know about purple shampoos, but I'd personally stay away from anything like that. Just use a normal shampoo that's like nourishing or whatever. Um, but I, I would personally avoid purple shampoos and things like that because I don't really know what they would do to the colour. But I'm sure they'd be fine, but I would stay away. And when I have used purple shampoos in the past, just like to do a normal hair wash, um, I found that it makes my hair go so grey looking. I really don't like that look. So I do just stick to normal shampoo and conditioner most of the time, and it, well, pretty much all the time. Sometimes I use the John Frieda blonde one, which I definitely think helps boost it a little bit, especially if you're on holiday. So yeah, this, if this isn't perfect, I mean, the, the good thing is now it has a chance to grow out, and I always, always find that even if it isn't exactly perfect, after a couple of washes and a few days in, don't even notice, like it just blends in really well with your hair. And I personally don't like a really bleached, overdone look. I just like to try and keep it as close to my natural colour as possible. Like you can see underneath that's my natural colour. And then I just like to do the highlights more on top rather than going underneath in all the layers. And I think that's what makes it look more natural because the sun just hits you on the tops of your hair and gives you that highlight at the top. So I like to keep it looking as kind of sun-kissed and natural as possible. So usually what I do, I've kind of done all the hair now but I've got about that much formula left. 
So I'm just gonna go around kind of looking to see where anywhere might have been left out and just fill in those gaps so it doesn't look spaced out in any way. So I'm very intrigued if um, any of you are gonna try this at home. Definitely let me know and let me know how you get on with it as well. As I say, I think the best thing to do is start really, really small and really, really subtly. Um, maybe just do a couple around the front, face them out quite nicely and evenly and just don't leave it on too long and then you'll really know if you like the results or not. But I honestly absolutely swear by this, I just think it's so easy, so quick, so inexpensive. This kit I think costs, I think it's £5.99 or something, the Weller Streaking Kit. I have used other kits in the past before when these haven't been available. But I always go back to this just because it's what I'm familiar with. I know it works well. I really like it. So, kind of nearing the end now. I know the girls have asked me in the past and I've tried to explain what to do, but it's so much easier in a video to actually show you how to do it. So I'm glad I saved it for when this is all happening because obviously a lot more people, hairdressers aren't looking to be open probably for a while. So um, a lot of people are gonna be struggling with their highlights. So now is gonna be the perfect time for it. Make sure you've got plenty of time as well in your day to do it. Like I'm doing mine on a Sunday morning when I've not got any rush about me. Um, I can just take my time with it. I've got no work to crack on with so I don't need to rush. Also, just keep some kitchen roll handy so that you can just wipe your hands because it does kind of get excess formula. You will also find your hands are disgusting feeling for the next few days. So, well, not in the next few days, the next few hours. So just be aware of that. Use lots of hand cream afterwards. Right, all is done, you can see now. I'm gonna leave it for about 15, 20 minutes, like I said, and then go and wash it out in the shower. So my hair is all washed and blow dried and this is the finishing result. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also give it a thumbs up as well. I'd absolutely love to know if you were trying this at home. So leave me a comment if you are. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.